Thank you very much, Brittany. It is time for Where is the Love? And licensed therapist and Fox 6 contributor, Dr. Misty Smith of ConvenientTherapy.com joins us. And we're actually talking about women in their relationships and making friendships, right? Yes. Developing them, making them, and uh, keeping them healthy. And obviously, Janice, you know I know a lot about that. <laughs> so I called on Janice's help up here to kind of... Uh, well, you know, what, what we're talking about, and Dr. Smith will, uh, uh, she'll expound on this, but as you get older, you, if you're lucky, you got a good little core group of friends. Yes. But there can still be drama within that core, right? Yes, there can. Relationships between women can be extremely toxic mm -hmm. and can really drain you. So I just wanted to point out some, some things to look for when you are you know, in relationships with other women, girls, it doesn't matter the age, all of these things are valid. Mm -hmm. But, you know, make sure that you're not feeling drained all the time, that they're not constantly in crisis. Mm -hmm. So if you leave every conversation emotionally and mentally <laughs> feeling like you've been run over by a train. For example, you see that person's <laughs> phone call coming through and you're like, I don't have the energy for this yes, right now. Yeah. Yes, so you're, you know, you're, you ignore their phone calls. I mean, that's <laughs> bad. Um, they're, they're very unsupportive of you they they call you only when they need something mm. so you know if that phone lights up and it's them that they need you to babysit or they need you to come over and listen to them cry about their <laughs> breakup with their boyfriend um, they're unreliable and you make all the effort Every trip, mm -hmm. every date night with the girls, you know, every get you together for it. coffee, it's you. Yeah. So, so how do you how do you sever that tie, especially if, like, say, you're in a close knit community and that type thing, and you know there are repercussions if you say I don't want to be your friend anymore. Well, you know, it's like Janice and I were talking. Friends come into your life for a time and a purpose occasionally. You know, they're there for a season, whether it's for college, whether it's for high school, whether it's for, you know, when you have a baby and everybody's got their little play dates with their babies. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has a purpose in your life and that's fine, but when all of these different things start going on and they're jealous of you and they're possessive of you and you start ignoring their phone calls, you know, there are some things that you need to do to try to get out of that relationship. Okay. Easily. You know, don't come running. Don't always be available. Um, don't take all of their phone calls. Sometimes just let it go to voicemail so that you're not always available. Make sure you're standing up for yourself and being as blunt as possible when it's necessary mm -hmm. so that they don't feel like they have control over you. Sometimes if, if a friend has a problem, you're kind of enabling them to let that problem continue if you always are there to bail them out of it, right? Exactly. If you're always there to listen to it, if you're always there to be supportive even when you don't think that you should be. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the biggest things that you can do is just to make new friends. Find yourself <laughs> right. a new outlet to find a way to make sure you get your mind off of it. One thing I've learned too about women, like guys, if, if we have a conflict, yeah, you just forget about the next day, you punch each other in the face and everything's good. <laughs> Uh, but you, now women, you, you kind of, I mean, if you sever a relationship, it's kind of forever, is it not? I mean, somebody wrongs you, do you kind of, is I that I've it? Ne I've never experienced that, so oh, I, can't, okay. I can't address that, but. I think that there are times when people come in and out of your life. Okay. And as long as you make that transition smooth right. and easy when you need them to kind of go out of your life for a mm -hmm. moment. Okay. Sometimes it then, happens naturally. You right. Just, you then, lose contact. And sometimes they come back in your life. So, so basically, unlike the housewives of New York, in Orange County, you want to be totally opposite of that, right? Exactly. So how do, how do you be, so some tips for being a good friend. What, what are some ways, you know, you be a, you're a good friend and you, and you make those relationships stronger? You know, make sure that you are being, make sure that when you have a phone conversation with someone that you actually ask them, how is your day? Mm -hmm. How is your life going? Do you need anything from me? Mm -hmm. um, because if you're always being there, you yeah. know, there is something to being a little selfish occasionally. If you, the conversation starts with, you are not going to believe this. You're like, oh. yes. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> so you got you to watch being selfish. Exactly. All right, now, gossip, though. Uh, if somebody's talking behind your back, and we all know that happens a mm. lot. Um, how do you deal with that? How does it, how do women how should women deal with that? Well, I think as we get older as women, we need to learn how to ignore some certain things. If you find out that someone's talking about you behind your back, you know, one of your friends says, "I heard this about you," and you know that the only person you told was mm -hmm. that best buddy of yours, then and and said, "Don't tell." Then maybe you need to start working on cutting those ties and don't be overly angry. Maybe be blunt 
want, um, state your opinion, but we can't always be friends forever. Right. But there's nothing like a good friend. That's exactly. right. Exactly. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Misty Smith, thank you. Thank you. Back in a moment. Let's check in with Jack.